Isn't it supposed to be sunny But my brain won't stop. My brain won't stop. The hell I saw, the voices I heard, the dreams that I lost changed. Nothing at all. I'm still my insufferable self, setting my hair on fire, giving you warmth. Hoping you'll realize I want you by my side. May you live peace bloom for me. Thought I would be satisfied seeing you content at the other side. Somehow I thought. These crazy thoughts, I deserve to be loved, I deserve to know love, we deserve to live in love. I wish there's no end, I wish there's no end to our time together. <laughs> Expensed would buy my innocence. Should I be mad? Should I be glad? Am I enough? How can I be enough? So I'm proud of myself. Reaching my goals is trapping my feelings. Change nothing at all. I'm so my insatiable self. Isn't it better to be gone? To be ignored? Not knowing there is liberty in this world not meant for me. May the living be spoon for me. Fuck. Up the song I pray for a night of no end. Under the pink satin ballet glass water. Proof purple mascara with a mat of cherry blush. Spinning around and around, curling skirt of lovely sister smile and thought. Not enough, 
Ladies and gentlemen, here comes your fakest one. On my shoulder, good, your heavy dream, I took the lead. Till actors came and placed off my tears, of my broken heart. I hate how every time I look to you and feel relief from your applause. Step on their toes, high heels, red soul. The black rat fatter than the devil in my wardrobe. Curate and collection of aesthetically pleasing dolls. Spinning around and around, sisters in hand, killed the doll you long desired. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough to make me feel much better. Ladies and gentlemen, goodbye. Goodbye, me for no, no, see now that no matter how. Many pieces are lost, somehow, and with the all, waste the song, waste the song, waste the song, waste the song. Around and around, scissors in hand, I feel the dog you long desired. That's enough, that's enough. I, I think I've made a wrong word somewhere. Fuck. <laughs> For all it matters, I jump through your hoops, burn me with your fire. I understand, I already know, you hate yourself more than you have ever hated me, my dear. Face the ghost that you were, the lost one you were. The lover you were meant to be for you. I'd scatter every bit of your heart, every bit of my heart. Together, we can search for them once more. When our journey ends, we'll do it all again. Until the sun goes To start meaning something, I'd have to solve for the value of why. My heart's just being dramatic. God, it doesn't mean a thing, no, not a thing at all. Again at night, I found you up there, all alone. You shed a tear. No matter what I do, I'm always the person that in the end no one really wants around. <laughs> Thank you.
This melted soul and the sun in the pit of my stomach Cause I found out that the mirror tried to kill you while she couldn't die And she even left my morals wrapped tight around my neck And my good one dry Staring at the twenty-one grams in the needle that pointing at the you really killed the monster Laughing as we spoke again You should know It's obvious That kind of thing It doesn't exist Why? E C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z
啊。Too popular can be such a hassle. Who knew the people would adore me? Shoot, 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 shoot
Shadows of fate! What the fuck happened to Shenhe? Yeah. 
battle plan. Holy shit!
Jupiter's Bizarre Adventures and a lot of things. From the top feature, the odd humor. Or, in the case of this video, it's villains. A lot of JoJo's rose gallery are some more iconic villains in anime. Will there be the vampire who's obsessed with the JoJo family, the serial killer who's obsessed with hand certain friends of the United States of America? Never been proud to be an American. Yes, I will talk about the president one day. Your comments have not been ignored. But today we're talking about one of the more overlooked villains of Jerry's Shut up! <sighs> the Avalo, Part 5. <laughs> and to be frank, it's kind of hard not to see why. Especially considering that his motivation, he means the series he's in, is nothing more than a man in the shadows looking to be the king of the world while at the same time not being known. It's actually logical if you think about it. If you're a well-known figure of a crime organization that allows people to rise up from the ranks by killing others, you essentially paint a target on your back. Of course, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Today, we'll be diving deep into the man who burns his past away. I'm on the common, and prepare yourselves. Jojo villains, there's a lot you can glean from the characters, especially if you look at how Araki develops them. With Yoshikage Kira, he had elements of David Bowie for the design, and elements of serial killers that Araki had researched. Dio was more or less inspired to be one of the worst villains of all time, not poorly written by him, but to be an evil bastard that the audience would love to hate. But for Diavolo, it well, is as the stars like foretold. Maybe it's because I'm a lazy bastard and I could that little nugget of information about him, but the most I could find is this quote. It was shocking how, to be told recall, there was a guy with an extra face on his belly for its own personality. From the Avalo, I'm an able to punk and his hair had a leopard. Let me scribe! Where's the rest of it? I like Total Recall as much as the next guy, but honestly, I really can't stretch that out for a good five minutes for this segment, so we'll do the next best thing. We'll establish who Diavolo is. <gasps> Diavolo is the main antagonist of Jojo Five, boss of Passion, the mafia that has its hands in several kinds of crimes across Italy. He's also the founder of this organization, and it's an organization that specializes in secrecy, since if they were out in the open, that would make them targets of assassination and law enforcement. Considering that Diavolo is a man who values his privacy to an extreme manner, the point that he uses the alternate personality as he changes, this works. It's actually an interesting thought process since if you consider the nature of crimes and by extent the mafia work with the shadows and hiding the power of prying eyes of authority makes sense for Diavolo. Because the fact that the Passione has several stand users of which their abilities cannot be seen by regular people, it needs to have your crimes be committed. Your stand, most people are like not the wiser. Like the idiot like I did explode outwards with a car. Our protagonist, Jordan Giovanna, does that in you know, part five. So there is potential, and if you look towards the villains previously in JoJo, Diabolo actually continues a trend. If you really consider the actions and conditions for each of the villains in previous parts, they had a reason or another to hide at one point. Dio in part one had to hide his true motivations. Well, What's your battle plan? Years, and when he became a vampire, he was defeated by Jonathan. He had a Recover. The pillarmen, one would say, are cowardly. They had the same aversion to sunlight. In Dio Part 3, he had to recover and get used to his new body, all while keeping himself hidden from the Joe Stars while he trained for, you know, using the world. In Kira and Part 4, well, I don't think I have to say anything about this guy, if you know it. What I'm trying to get at is that a lot of the villains in JoJo, even in future parts, freeze to the core! Or another. Instead, users will inevitably come across each other's past, and that doesn't stop the villains from hiding themselves from the heroes or enemy stand users. Diavolo is probably one of the more extreme ones, well, save for maybe. But that's probably for another video at another time. We're talking about the man who was willing to go so far to protect his identity that he was willing to kill his only daughter so he would not trace him from her. Man, this should have been the video with the surf shark yet, yeah, so we can make a joke about how to pay such a heavy price so you can hide your identity. God, I'm such an idiot. Need no choice. Of your narrator's intelligence level, this dance is for you. Is not exactly the fact that his character is to be a mystery. That's the point. Of a man whose goal is to not exist in the mind of others by controlling the world of the shadows. In a sense, Diabolo's motivation is actually 
that Akira is a different child of my strength. over in the world because of it. It's a shame since the inspector ministry of Diabalo is extremely what dangerous. An idiot. In comparison to Dio and Kira, with Dio, Beauty and the heroes know exactly who Dio is. But the true measure of his abilities were what made the Joe Star Egyptian floor group wary of Dio and prepare to hurry up to kill him. He'll be back. Slayer. In with contrast with Kira, while we, the audience, know his abilities, and when he adopts the I will do as you command. are aware of what he looks like. Mario it's time for this. For the Apollo is actually the of both those mysterious elements. Where we as the audience and the characters don't know what he looks like or what his abilities are, at least not until it's too late. Even after we see time his abilities, we control. still don't know exactly who the Apollo is. Although, the Dokyo scenes do kind of give away that something isn't quite right. Yeah, we'll be talking a little bit about Tokyo on this too. I mean, the two are essentially two sides of the same coin. However, we as the audience do get to learn more about the character, about how his birth was nearly impossible, about how he was born in an all-female prison with no father of a two-year pregnancy. Not that it really matters in the grand scheme of things, the overall plot of Jojo, when he was 19, he had to fake his own death, all the while killed a few other people in the process. What did he do after that? Well, he decided to go to Egypt for some reason to join an excavation. Well, he was the one who did find the arrow. Obey! The arrow stands, selling most of them, save for one for great You're and then You're the up. Passing up <laughs> return to Italy. It's not really a lot to be learned about the Apollo. At least it is the as the stars material. foretold. There's a lot of fan theories, but as we say on the show multiple times, theories are just theories. Nothing more, nothing less. But for now, we'll be referring to what makes the Apollo to be a threat. Let me scribe. One of the key elements that I've said in all my videos is that to have an effective villain, you need to be able to have them be a threat, especially if they're intended to be that way. If they're not threatening, what's the point? If the heroes aren't going to take the villain seriously, why should the audience? This ties to the point I made in the last segment. That Diabolo has a unique situation in JoJo, and it's one of his greatest strengths that if you go to is, you'd never be able to defeat him because of his stance ability. Which, hey, since I brought up, we might as well talk about his stance abilities before we get to his proper introduction. Theobaldo's Stan, King of Crimson, has two prominent abilities. The ability to erase time from 10 seconds, and his ability to see the future. Well, that second one is due to his sub stand called Epitaph. Stand abilities Ready, work in tandem with each other. Epitaph forecasts the future, projected in Diabolo's hair, where his stand projects is 100% fated to happen. And this is where his main stand ability comes into play. King Crimson. King Crimson! That allows him to skip time up to 10 seconds. When activated, all will move along the predestined paths that were projected by Epitaph. Everyone but Diabolo himself. Everyone affected will have no control on what they will do during the time skip. They don't have no memory of what happened. Diabolo, on the other hand, is free to move Fate is upon him. In return, he cannot interact with him. He essentially faces through it, and anything he interacts with will ignore him. He's immune for physical attacks and cannot attack anyone okay. during the time skip. In that I case, still got he basically this. just repositions himself for strategic purposes. The best example would be when he's fighting with Karate. Since he was able to keep himself hidden from view with only his stand actually being fully visible to the character and the audience at the time. And this power actually works extremely well with a character like Diabolo. Diabolo's nature is that of a paranoid person, and one of the aspects of paranoia is the anticipatory fear of the unknown. So, with the power of Epitaph, Diabolo can plan ahead and change his strategies. Considering some of his personality traits, this is especially fitting, so he wouldn't have to worry about what'll happen to him. Without this power, Diabolo would be a lot easier to catch off guard, since he does seem to be pretty reliant on its powers to predict his opponent's moves. It can also be symbolic of the fact that Diabolo was actually pretty short-sighted, despite his long-term plans. There's also the fact that these two abilities can be used for elaboration. Epitaph on its own predicts the future, and what happens is that 10 seconds of time is set in stone. But when used with time skip, Diabolo can avoid the prediction's outcome entirely. Diabolo claims that this is all due to fate. With a 10 second time skip, everyone but him follows their fates to the letter. To point out there were some discrepancies with how King Crimson actually worked due to how the manga had portrayed it, but the anime has managed to clear up a few misconceptions. At least that's how I figured in my research. But when you couple this with his personality and secretive nature, it's a deadly combination that works well to his advantage. When you look towards some of the previous villains with their stance, consider their powers, they match pretty well with the villain's personalities. Dio viewed himself to be above all mankind, and he wasn't wrong. 
and a power that effectively could shut down other stands and anything else fits with a man who sees himself I as will the do greatest as you command. in the world. Kira, on the other hand, was a man who wanted to live a quiet life while indulging in his personal vices. As such, Killer Queen had the ability to create bombs in secret as well as remove any star trace of who Kira really was. Diavolo was in the same vein with his powers, which not only allowed him to see in the future, but Manifest. also to <laughs> the so he could effectively keep his identity secret. To be fair, Diavolo was quite the coward. He believes that the past, no matter how insignificant what? it may seem, can be used against someone. As such, he does everything he can to protect his identity and preserve his identity, including trying to kill his own child. It's because of this cowardice and paranoia that spurs Diabolo into becoming frantic. It's almost like a cornered animal. Because of that desperation, they will lash out worse than you would think. It's why with the Hitman team, when they asked for territory and a raise, Diabolo turned them down. They began to search for his information. One of their members, Sorbet, was sliced up alive and the other Gelato committed suicide. By sending this message, Sorbet's body was frozen in formaldehyde and framed and sent to the Hitman team. Truly a gruesome message. It should be noted that Diabolo actually managed to get quite a few kills to his short side tactics, however. He managed to kill Bucciarati, Abacchio, and Narancia. In addition to Polnareff, if you want to throw in Dopio, he did a bit Rosetta. There's a lot to be said about Diabolo's abilities, but then there's also Dopio, a second skin as it were, which is a fictional version of D.I.D., Dissociative Identity Disorder, or as some of you will like to view it a long time ago, Mental Personnel. I need to make it clear that it's a fictional version of this, since I'm pretty sure DID doesn't change a person's height and body type. Now, yes, I'm they can actually. Maybe not to the extent disorder. I'm pretty sure shown in with the other one, Dopio, but it definitely happens. Especially with the inclusion of the physical changes when alters change. I'm pretty sure this isn't a symptom of a disorder. I just want to make it clear, I'm not a psychologist, nor is this the point of the video. So, please don't get in my case for that. Instead, the fact is that he has an alternate personality to use to his advantage. Since it Dopio is the stars a really told. loyal person to Diavolo, the mob boss can use another skin to walk around the day. Now, the fact that Dokio seems more innocent as a character... ...also plays into that, since people often view that as someone who couldn't possibly be related to the boss. And yet, Abakio faced that same challenge. So there's a lot of potential for Diabolo to be a villain and utilize his abilities to do so. However, like a lot of villains, he has some weaknesses. And that comes from his... Let me scribe! What are all these dragons made of? There is a recurring element in JoJo, and that is fake. There are many characters in the series of JoJo that will often reference me. Such as, no matter how strong or weak, all stand users are destined to meet one another. Diabolo is no different. It's an obsession of his, where he believes that it guides his life and that he can control the action of all things, and that he is the one who can control that. Consider, if you will, that there are fortune tellers in the story of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and a lot of times they're considered to be a lot more credible than the world of Jojo. And as we've stated in the last part, one of Diabolo's powers is that he can see about 10 seconds. Sure. And there are multiple times where Diabolo will say that it's his fate, or that he's assured of his victory. But considering my last line section, this raises the question. Hold him down! Woo! Yeah! Villains of JoJo has a weakness, and oftentimes it has to do with their own personality. What exactly is teamwork? Dio and Kavaris believe that they were the greatest figures in the world. Do your master's bidding! Diabolo was no different, as his arrogance would have become his ability to be someone who made sense of war, and our body was not some very serious mistakes. Let's take a look at the arrows. What the part knew that it was fake that guided Diabolo, arrows that he saw in the book, and then he gave that back. The seal! That's broken! It plays to Diabolo's excitedness, without thinking about testing the idea of the stand, which means that it is like a and as he has to go back on the decision in the last part of the fight, he will lead to his fight. He already had the arrow on his hands many years ago, but due to him wanting to get results immediately, he 
cost an impossibility to get a greater power. The Hitman team really passed for a raise in some territory, something that pretty much every other team in the hospital. Oh, Brian? Yeah, Bob said that. And while Killer Sword Bay and Gelato sent a clear message not to search for his identity, simply trying to work with a very competent, effective, and dangerous assassin team would have been a much better compromise and would have had him a stronger and more loyal team. Instead of waiting for Trish to be delivered to him, as was the plan, and when Mutarati's gone, Diavolo could kill Trish on his own time. The mob boss just decides to snatch her away from Mutarati at the last second. Sure, Diavolo does have the power to kill Mutarati, and does so. It saved him a headache, however, especially when he's well aware of Mutarati's nature and skill as a stand user, as well as pretty much everyone else who's outside the building. I loved him! There are a number of other things that we have to consider with this, but these are some of the bigger issues of Diabolo's short-sightedness. And it goes into play with his fatal character Another flaw, how he's going to get short-term success without considering the long-term ramifications of his decision. Now, am I saying this makes him a bad villain? No. No, I am not. Just because a villain makes mistakes like these, that doesn't mean that they're a bad character. The fact that a lot of these issues stem from Diabolo's paranoia add to his humanization. While his motivations for starting the Pasi are exactly clear, we do need to consider that before he went to Egypt, he did effectively destroy his identity and lit a town on fire because of it. So ever since then, the shadow of paranoia of someone possibly discovering him and his crimes could be considered to be clawing at his back. That's understandable when you consider that Diabolo didn't just go with the short-term wins, and had thought of his situations more, he'd probably be a lot more successful as a villain. Then again, if you looked at any of the villains and filed their flaws in hindsight, and as an outside third party who isn't actually part of the story, anyone can make these observations. Hell, one could easily argue that there was a great risk to testing the arrow on a stand, since not every person who gets stabbed with the arrow becomes a stand user. Some of them die, or it wouldn't even be possible to do so, considering that stands aren't exactly made of physical material. The reason I'm bringing these up is to talk about the character flaw, his paranoia, his short-sighted decisions, and his obsession with fate do blind him the issues that his plans would spawn. It's a mixture of personal issues which can cause Diabolo to perform some seriously terrible acts, and at the same time, a lot more issues and problems in the future. Oh shit, I was recording. <laughs>